Good evening. Uh, welcome to tonight's road show here at Mike's Bar and Grill. Uh, my name is Steve Thompson, uh, d the director of athletics here at Baldwin Wallace, and I am privileged to, to be tonight's host. It's an honor of mine and probably not really great for you guys listening at home. Uh, I got a face for radio, so feel free to turn away from the screen and, and just uh, enjoy some of the stories we get into t to tonight. I'm excited for the guests we have. We have Tim Budick, uh, the president of the Brown and Gold Club, Hall of Fame athlete here at Baldwin Wallace. And then tonight we're going to get into kind of the inner workings of our football program with two guys that really behind the scenes do it all. Dean Collison, our uh, offensive line coach, recruiting coordinator, and assistant to the head coach, and Rennell Parnell, uh, who is our special assistant to the uh, football coach, which like you, I'm going to really ask what that really means because I have no idea, and supposedly they all report to me, which is really kind of interesting. Anyways, uh, excited to have those three with us tonight, but really want to talk about the Yellow Jackets this past weekend, uh, or past week really, since we were with you last Monday. Uh, a, a good solid week. Uh, l yesterday, our women's golf team won the John Carroll Invitational. Uh, those that know me know any time we can beat that school on the east side, it's a good day. Uh, and our women's golf team did just that. Uh, and sophomore Brooke Newsom uh, was the medalist for the day, winning that tournament or that invitational. And then on Saturday, two outstanding performances by our women's soccer and volleyball team. Women's soccer won 2-1 to one over Wilmington in a great match there. And then volleyball in three sets beat Wilmington and Lauren Gardner, our defensive specialist libero, won her fourth career OAC Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, and just really a great weekend for Yellow Jacket Athletics. As you know, the football team was in a bye week, uh, so no update from them. Uh, and upcoming this week, uh, a lot going on for the Yellow Jackets uh, this Wednesday. Uh, it's, as I talked to uh, a couple soccer players today, it's John Carroll week for them and our volleyball program. Men's soccer and volleyball on Wednesday night will head to University Heights for a 7 p.m. tilt, uh, both volleyball and men's soccer there, while our women's soccer team will play host uh, to that team from the east side of town at 7 p.m. at Finney Stadium. Would really encourage you to show up and support uh, our young ladies on the women's soccer team, uh, led by Sydney Rice, uh, a sophomore forward, I think sophomore now, uh, that is uh, having another great season for the Yellow Jackets. And then Saturday, uh, a lot going on uh, on campus, uh, but first a few teams on the road as cross country. Uh, both men and women head to the Interregional Rumble, hosted by Oberlin just down the street. That is the closest uh, cross-country meet that uh, you have a, a, as an opportunity to see both those teams and OAC champion last year, Hope Murphy, perform. Uh, and then swimming and diving. We've had Laura, uh, Coach Demoline on. Uh, swimming and diving kicks off this weekend down at Wilmington uh, in a dual mat meet there. Uh, and then volleyball and men's soccer both travel to Muskingum. Uh, to take them on on Saturday afternoon. And, and then we got a lot going on here at Finney Stadium with the Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, and I'll talk about those nine inductees here in a second very briefly. Uh, will be a, The new class will be inducted into the Hall of Fame at 11, or, or lunch at 11 with a uh, ceremony at noon. And feel free to stop by the tent beside the Packard Athletic Center if you want to peek in and see some of those great former Yellow Jackets. Uh, that football game, the annual Hall of Fame football game, which also this year will be the 44th annual Lee Tressel Shriners Classic. Uh, another great tradition that will be my second time around and, and really honored to celebrate the day with the Shriners there. Uh, and we will take on Muskingum at 1.30 p.m. Uh, and then a women's soccer game, again, versus Muskingum at 7 p.m. on Saturday. So a lot if you want to come up, uh, come to Berea and, and catch a little bit of action. You can watch the football team and women's soccer programs both compete and, and hopefully bring home a, a couple wins as we bring on, uh, as a group, bring on, a, bring home a couple wins. Now I, I, I briefly mentioned that Hall of Fame uh, and, and we're going to touch on that a little bit more but, but really the Hall of Fame class just to review some great 
former athletes here at Baldwin Wallace. Tanya Davis Kanyesny, uh, sorry about that, was a softball player here. Brandon Hedges, a former football and track and field outstanding athlete. Sarah Gumbash Lampy, uh, one of the best swimmers and divers in school history, uh, will be inducted. Jimmy Leffler, a uh, member of the baseball team, former member of the baseball team, will be inducted. Greg Patrick, uh, also another track and field, uh, along with Brandon Hedges. Uh, we have two brothers that will go in this year. Chris and Dirk Riemann Schneider. Uh, the, that name synonymous with the musical program and the conservatory and the Bach Festival. Uh, but apparently they're pretty good at football as well as they'll go into the Hall of Fame, both as football student athletes. And then two honorary members. Uh, Dr. Mike Ritz was a former football player at BW uh, and then went on to be one of the team doctors and spent roughly... 30 years on the sidelines supporting our student athletes and going to recognize him and then also the other honorary member is Linda Short uh, worked at the university for a very long time and oversaw a lot of the records uh, and kind of following up Eloise Tressel uh, and some of the work in the archives and, and really excited to recognize her and uh, really all their commitments all nine members to the Hall of Fame but Enough about that. Let's talk to Tim Budick. Uh, we're going to bring him out. And as he's walking up, if we can get his attention, uh, he is the president of the Brown and Gold Club, a 2002 graduate. And this is going to spin some wheels because we had to have a conversation about this earlier. A 2002 graduate, four-year letter winner in cross country and track and field. But he was the runner-up in the steeplechase in 2003. So he graduated in 2002. Maybe he'll get in to tell you a little bit about how uh, maybe Coach T bent some rules, maybe. I don't know. I'm just not going to make any assumptions. But he did go on and, and was the NCAA runner-up in the, in the steeplechase in 2003. Still the OAC record holder in the steeplechase. Uh, barely. 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 Uh, he did uh, sneak out to the track meet BW hosted last year, make sure – he showed up, uh, ironically, right before the steeplechase started to make sure uh, his record stood, and it, it still stands today. So, Tim, welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to have a little conversation and kind of carry on some of the stuff we talked about, but really turn the floor over to you just to talk a little bit about the Brown and Gold Club. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a great organization, obviously, to support student-athletes uh, of, of Baldwin Wallace University. Um, you know, alumni can be involved. Um, I'm obviously the president of the board, but we have a great board. Um, a lot of um, impact that we make through uh, our events that we host, uh, the reverse raffle being the biggest one to, to raise funds that we uh, directly give back to the, the, um, the sports um, through, a, through, a, through a process that we want to make sure that what we're giving back, what we're raising, the funds that we're doing um, are impacting as many student athletes as possible at Baldwin Wallace, right? So um, we really try to tailor it to, to um, items that impact all of the sports um, or as many as possible, right? Um, but we're, we're marching in the, um, or in the, in the parade for, for brown and gold. Uh, Bold and Gold Love that. on uh, October 22nd. So great to have people come out and join us and learn more about uh, the Brown and Gold Club. Yeah, no, I love that. You mentioned the parade and marching in the parade. Uh, I'll put a little plug in, too. At, yep. Right after, as you're done marching, we, we will have a Brown and Gold tailgate right by the Packard Correct. as well. They can sneak some snack foods, maybe have a cocktail or two. So come walk in the parade and, and, and touch on that. But you, you mentioned some of the support you do for student athletes. Can can you talk about a couple of projects uh, during your time and involvement with uh, the Brown and Gold Club that you have done? Uh, for yeah, BW? I mean, we've done some um, stuff for baseball with the new 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 netting on the on the backstop of, of the baseball stadium. Uh, we did um, obviously some uh, um, some chairs um, for for multiple sports, the volleyball, the basketball yep. programs, uh, where we got involved in that funding we also did a project within the um the, the the rec center where we did kind of a hallway dedicated to all the sports um and members of the hall of fame committees or, or you know standout athletes over the years including um you know 
just the kind of it, it helps with recruiting. It helps with the kind of the, the entryway and the passage in, throughout the uh, the rec center for people to come and visit campus um, and kind of get kind of a, a reflection of like the, the past, the historic relevance yeah. of the athletics at BW and also like the, the student athletes that are representing the, the Yellow Jackets today. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, like I said I, earlier, I, I've been here a year and through the interview process, one of the things I wanted to do on my interview of COVID, right? I wasn't allowed on campus. So before uh, I accepted a job, I asked President Helmer for a tour. And I had been on campus. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a 01 bachelor's degree guy from another institution. Uh, so it had been 20 some years since I've been to Baldwin Wallace's mm -hmm. campus. And, and I remembered the gym and the, and the mods, the rec center there. But walking down that tunnel yeah. as a older man that works in athletics, I won't say how old because it's been too long. Uh, but that really had a lot of pop to it. Uh, and I know our coaches really appreciate that. You know, that brand, the, the, the BW brand, the Stinger brand, as, as athletic director, we continue to try to put that out there. But it really starts with what people see when they step on campus. So that, that is a huge part uh, of what our recruits see and, and, and interact with and, and helps get the next – Tim Budick on our campus. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, I think it's just the way that things are marketed nowadays, right? There's a lot of visuals to everything that we do, whether it's social media, Instagram, everything's can, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. It is. If you walk that hallway, there's a lot of words and a lot of history that gets wrapped up in a pretty quick process. So to kind of build that out and, and, and bring that kind of corridor, um, you know, to fruition was was pretty was a pretty cool project for the Brown and Gold Club. Yeah, no, I I love it. What where do you see kind of maybe some directions in the future here? Maybe in this year, uh, what what are you looking at poss as possibilities? I won't hold you to it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we want to obviously support the wrestling program. They've been such a great program, you know, um, you know, being on that national stage. So um, they're they're obviously do some upgrades uh, in regards to wrestling mats and equipment and stuff like that. So we're focusing on that. Um, and also, you know, again, impacting as many students as possible and creating kind of like that, um, that environment of, 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 of excitement. So there's, you know, these inflatable, you know, t uh, inflatable tunnel that we can set up in multiple areas where yep. a, lot of the, a lot of the teams run through, whether it's indoor sports or over at Finney for the, for the football team. Um, or introductions for certain sports, um, putting our putting our funds towards that sort of stuff. Um, again, to your point, enhance the brand and impact our student athletes. No, I, I love that. So, talk about your experience then, as as you're a recruited athlete. Uh, by really, and and you know, I'm blessed that the coaches I get to work with are some titans, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are yep. some Baldwin Wallace legends here. You ran for probably one of the three or four coaches that go up on Mount Rushmore of Baldwin Wallace coaches. You got to compete for one. Yep. So, so talk a little bit about how you were recruited, what you see as different today maybe, and, and, and challenges then to, to now, and, and just those different experiences. Yeah, I mean, obviously running for Coach Taraski was, was an honor. Um, you know, and just, it just uh, you know, the more, the more and more you reflect on um, – the, the program he built, the tradition he built, um, the relationships he built amongst us, um, the, you know, and anyone that ran or competed for Coach Trasky in, in, in track or cross country um, have an instant connection, right? He, he, he was big on family. Him and his wife, Denny, were big on that creating that family atmosphere, and it truly was, right? It sounds cliche, and it's what everyone will tell you, um, but I think because of how they managed, his door was always open. He was always more willing to have a conversation with you as a person, as a student, as a young adult, and then anything you did as an athlete was secondary, right? So it didn't matter about your performance. He was there for you as a person, yeah. which I think at that age point of 18 to 22 is very extremely important, right? And I just remember the recruiting process with him. He was so laid back in his recruiting process, <laughs> but he was he was consistent. He was persistent. He was always there at the big meets. Um, he had a tradition of always going to the um, the state meet, and just like anywhere, anyone that knows Coach T, he always held court, whether it was on a folding <laughs> chair at the corner of a track or inside of a gator or a golf cart, his presence was known. If he was in an area or vicinity, he, his presence was known. Right? Yeah. And the same thing at the track at the state meet, right? He'd sit at Ohio, uh, Ohio Stadium when the horseshoe still hosted the track meet, and he would <laughs> sit on the back stretch about halfway up, and he wouldn't come seek you out. He would let you know he was there prior 
and then you as an athlete felt honored that he was there and you would actually go march up the stands either before <laughs> or after your event sit down with him visit with him for a few minutes he literally just didn't move like and and again it wasn't out of arrogance that he made you come to him but i think it was just that understanding of like listen i'm always here for you you, you just come to me as you need me right yeah. he didn't force it upon you he didn't he wasn't very uh, forceful in his methods he was just consistent persistent and always there he was just like that steady 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 um uh mentor that you can always go towards yeah i, th- I think it's funny you, m- you mentioned the whole court so so obviously he had passed before i was hired uh and a couple months into my job uh we went out and i got a chance to visit with denny uh, and and just hear some of those stories and and so start to build a relationship which which means a lot to me to understand the history of BW and, and those impactful moments but but fast forward she showed up first for the Hall of Fame ceremony last year uh, and essentially said there was no way I wasn't coming to this and then fast forward to the conference track meet uh, in the spring her daughter's supposed to pick her up. I'll probably get her in trouble again. Her daughter doesn't show up. Yep. Then he still gets in the car and comes. Yep. And she essentially held court in a golf yes. cart in the Absolutely. rain. And and the, the amount of OAC coaches that came up, not yep. just BW people, because yep. uh, plenty of BW people did, but OAC coaches came up and shook her hand, spent time with her. So that holding court is, is a family thing, yeah. uh, 100%. Yep. But, yep. but from her, there's a lot of stories. Yep. Uh, what's one Coach T story you'd, you'd, you'd touch on? Oh, man, most of them I can't tell. Because Those are the best. I, I, yeah, I, I, think, I think the value of him and I <laughs> were, was, were that um, we were both equally as stubborn. I mean, he's probably one of the most stubborn individuals I've ever met in my life. And I think um, what, he, what he saw in me was I was a mini him, right? Um, I just remember, you know, Lots of stories were on our Florida trips for track and field, right? And just, just kind of how he let us be young adults. Um, and, and by being young adults, you would get into trouble and you would do a lot of <laughs> stuff that you weren't supposed to be doing. And even in, in, in the ways he would reprimand us, right? There was, a, there was a lesson to be learned. He would come down hard on you, but you always knew that the next day or the next interaction with him, that it, it, was, it was gone. It was, it was behind you. He never, Love that. He never held um, any of your decisions or in-the-moment reactions as a young adult against you, right? It was always a clean slate. What can we do to move forward? What can we do to do better, right? And, um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing about Coach T was he had great sayings, right? He always had his go-to sayings, <laughs> and, and, and most of them are, are non-PC, but, um, <laughs> you know, and, and you'd end up like, attaching yourself to these sayings and we would print t-shirts and we would have the front of our refrigerators and and when we were living off campus would have pictures of him and what we'd do is we'd search the internet for young young pictures of him while he was coaching in nebraska (laughs) and then we would take that image and then marry it up with like sayings that that he would constantly reiterate to us over and over and over again yeah so he was a man he was a, a myth and a legend right and then we would he would just he had this ability to never um like kind of like tote that himself but like we would all do it for him right yeah. so we would build him up more and more and more and more <laughs> and like we we loved there's nothing more than like loving to like kind of feed into that that legendary status yeah. that he had right it was good to kind of feed him up because he never took himself too serious super cerebral super intelligent always composed very very rarely did i ever see him lose his temper and when he did it was warranted and it was never like (laughs) over the line right right um but for us to kind of be his biggest advocates he never wanted the spotlight and i think one of the best things was we always wanted to put him in the spotlight whether it was just as a person or to go out and compete for him um at the end of the day like i i love my time at bald walls i love my time being a yellow jacket but i mean i ran for coach jurassic I ran for, for myself selfishly, and I ran for Coach Jurassic. Yeah. And I don't know if there's there's anyone, uh, another coach in my life that I would say that for. I, I think that starts, uh, and again, it's 14 months of history I can talk yep. Uh, yep. about at BW, but I, I think that's the thread that really runs through the successful history of BW athletics is it's they came here, student athletes got great educations. You got a great education. You had a great experience. 
but but the coach that changed their life, yeah. uh, whether that be Lee Tressel, Bill Taraski, all like Sherry Hare now. Like Absolutely. we we are blessed. Uh, Jamie Gibbs, you mentioned wrestling earlier. Brian Harrison, I, I could go on yeah, and yeah. on. Uh, but that is is something that BW owns, and, and and we need to do a better job owning it. Really, as the athletic director, I would say that of telling those stories of the of the great coaches because the influence they can have on your life. Speaking of influences on your life, uh, I'm sure your wife, who's also a tremendous track athlete, Hannah Budick, uh, a new employee at BW as well, yeah, yeah. had some She's influence. Uh, she is back at BW. And, yep, yep. Uh, but any truth to the rumor that she was a way better runner than you? Um, probably. Probably. <laughs> I mean, if you were going to list definitely would be a longer list than mine absolutely no doubt about it through um uh you know the alumni page and the athletic yep page. it's on the bw yellow jackets.com um, yep yep, B, yep bw alumni at, at B, uh, bw.edu as well if you want to connect to us through through email um but i'll put, put my email and my cell phone personal uh in this and and i would love to hear from folks outstanding yep. tim thank you appreciate so very it. much i appreciate it absolutely. yeah absolutely yep, Look forward to working with you throughout your tenure as president. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right. Thank you to Tim for joining us right there. Now we're going to talk the inner workings of college football and, most importantly, Yellow Jacket football. Uh, joined now by fifth-year assistant coach Rynell Parnell. Uh, the first question, I mentioned this in the header, uh, assistant coach, D-line coach, also special advisor to the head coach. As the athletic director, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of titles there. Uh, I guess for me, me being at BW for, you know, as an alum, um, there's a lot of different things and connections that I have across campus, and I think helps – Coach Hilbert out, I mean, whether it's you know operation type stuff or dealing with people in food service or travel or what it is. So I think it's my job to kind of be that guy in between stuff to help take stuff off his plate. Um, and you know I think it it definitely helps that going on campus there's, there's people that were still here when you know when I was here. I'm fortunate to be able to just still have that relationship to make that stuff go go the right way. So yeah, I'm I'm sure those relationships are important and. I, I would sit here and tell you, Nellie and I are, are talk probably just as much as Coach Hilbert and I do. Uh, so, so go back. You mentioned the travel. Last year we had a chance to go to Hampton Sydney University. Uh, we, Labor Day weekend. Uh, I think it was a three night. I think we left Thursday, came back late Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. Or two night, th three days. Uh, maybe I something like that. Sure. <laughs> But well-orchestrated trip, great trip for the guys, just as far as where we were and all that. Just just talk about what all that took to put together. Um, you know, I think for us it was trying to create that experience for the guys. You know, I think because it's it's fun. You know, we don't we don't do it a lot like some of the bigger schools, you know. Um, so you try and have that experience for them to make sure that it goes smooth, you know. And, and obviously there's coordinating the food and where you're going to stop and – I mean, we stayed in two different hotels, right? You know, um, so. And how many? How many is in your travel party? When you mentioned that, we're not talking about five people. No, no. <laughs> I mean, we, we were probably I meant, you know, probably anywhere from 70, 75. You know, if you're talking about support staff, about 80, 80 people. Yeah. You know, so that was, it, you know, logistically it was it was tough, but again, I think that with the support that we had, you know, and you, you plan for that stuff so far in advance that it's, you know, the, the, more, the more you do. In advance, the easier it is. The easier it gets. No, sure. absolutely. But you're to some level still, it's 18 to 22 year olds, and and at least 55, 60 of that were, were those, that age group. Sure. It's got to be worse than herding cats, I would think. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. You just don't know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I tell you this though, I think our guys are real good about it. You know, I think the first day was pretty relaxed because you're not really at that day before the game yet. You know, but I think that, that Friday night it was more so, okay, we're trying to get in game mode. The guys are a little bit more serious, you know, and obviously it's a little bit more, hey, lights out, you know, and just make sure we're locked in on what tomorrow is. Yeah. You know, it's a business trip, you know. But, again, we try to create that fun atmosphere as well to say, hey, listen, it is a it is a trip on the road. We're not used to doing it. Um, and any type of excitement, you know, even the one hotel we stayed at had pool tables and cornhole so the guys were able to have fun and hang out. And I think it's 
it's a family, you know, and so we try to create that family atmosphere. Okay, let, let's go with that. I love that. And, and, and being around the guys and, and coaches, I, I think it's a great opportunity. So, so talk about some intentional things you do to help build that family atmosphere around the program. Um, I think it's, you know, you know, we get started in August, you know, and it's, it's a long season. Um, so any time that we can have a fun team event, you know, whether it's paintball, you know, we want paintball, or it's a, you know, three on three battles for tournament off season, you know, or, you know, it's even at, even at uh, practice, you know, uh, this past week we had offenses try and look at that stat and say that we that we stop the run and then we get after the quarterback and, and do our job as a unit. Yeah. You know? So so last year, you, you, uh, obviously our de defense performed very well last year. Sure. Uh, lost a lot on the defensive line. Uh, much younger this year. Sure. So so how is that uh, that that shift uh, kind kind of mentally? How do, how do you? help them grow as quick as they can because as you said it's a very competitive conference For sure. i mean we're, we're going up against grown men yeah. uh and, and some of these a, a lot of guys playing are 18 19 years old so sure. I, so how do you get them to grow up fast um you know i think it's you know i challenge them you know and i think it's 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 for them it's understanding that okay you know this is not easy you know um i'm gonna ask some young guys to step up and play and it's going to be a continuous, you know, can you get the job done? If not, let's go to the next guy, and then maybe you get another opportunity, you know, if you, if you earn it. Um, so, and to be honest with you, those young guys that have stepped up and played have done a tremendous job, and when their number's called, they're, they're ready, you know, they yep. execute. Um, and, I, and I've been thankful because those guys have accepted that challenge, you know. Um, you look at guys like, you know, Sam Rashid, a freshman coming in. I mean, Ryan Pegues, who's, who played a little bit last year, um, you know, even Jordan Smith, who, who played a lot last year, but, you know, he's still young and trying to, you know, get in his own way and become a really good football player. Um, but those guys have, have definitely made an impact, you know. Um, so, I, and I'm excited because the earlier you get those guys' experience, yeah. you know, and you look at play the next year because they've had that game experience already. Right. Um, how, how many guys are you running through that defensive line on a typical Saturday? Uh, we're probably, I mean, probably eight to ten, I would say, you know, depending on where we're at in the game. Yep. You know, we have different packages, so depending on if you're playing three or four on that, you know, that particular day. So it's, you know, and, and they know it. We, we try to keep those guys rolling. I, it's important for me to keep those guys fresh, you know. Um, I think we, we, we're much more able to affect the game fresh. Um, so I try and make sure that you don't know when your number is called, you know, but it will be called, and you got to be ready for it. So, so what's uh, – b before we get in to have a little bit of fun, uh, not that this has not been fun. That's kind of – man, that's kind of rude. Uh, but, but before we get into kind of the off football uh, subjects, what's the call when you hear over the headset? Uh, you know, I, I, I was stepped into one of the recruiting visits, and, and Coach Hilbert, you know, just a lot of energy from him. Sure. Uh, but he starts talking about, oh, I love to blitz. Sure. I'll blitz everybody. Sure. If your grandma and grandpa want to blitz, they can blitz. You know that, like, That's him, I'm, I, I mean, I'm not a big guy, so I don't want to blitz. But I got pretty excited. What's What's the call when he makes a call that comes over the headset that 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 you're like, oh, this is gonna be fun? You know what, man? It's so many different calls, and I just, you know, it's when you look at him, he has that look that he's about to he's about to send some pressure. You don't know what it is, but you're like, whatever it is, we're coming, we're coming after him. It's the, and we look back at it on film, and we're like. I knew as soon as he called, he looks down and he goes, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the house, man. So we're like, we're, we're, we're with you, coach. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. You know, so it's it's fun. It's awesome. And, and, and I think that's what our defense is. It's aggressive. I think guys that we played against, they they know that because it's it's who we are. You know, so. Yeah. And, and the guys, again, even young guys come in and the guys on the team, know they understand that. You know, and again, they accept that challenge and, you know, we know what our defense is. You can see it's really fun to play that way, uh, that the guys love it. And, and, and go back to the Ohio Northern game. Sure. Uh, we're getting ready. I think they got fourth and one or, or, or some fourth and short. Uh, and, and we're getting lined up. I'm standing about the 25-yard line. Dead, and, and it just hits me like Coach Hilvert's going to lose his marbles. And we got like five or six students getting ready to take a picture of this sure. play. And I'm like, I just got to get my phone out and, and videotape Coach Hilvert because I knew he was going to do something. All right. And the, the stress release, the excitement, I mean, you could ball up all kinds of different emotions that he essentially let out. And in th that moment where you see him, a lot of the coaches, a lot of the players just all, like, 
let's go, let's get on, like we're in it together, this is fantastic, we got this stop. I mean, as a coach, you see that. What does that do for the work you do? Uh, it, it jacks me up, man. You know, I think it's there's so much that I think that, you know, people on the outside don't know how much work you put into it and how much work these kids, you know, these young men, I should say, put into it and the hours and the film study and the weight room stuff, the grind. And, you know, you get in games like that to where it's like back and forth, back and forth, and, you know, you're, you're just hoping that you come out on top. And then it finally happens, and you understand, like, hey, listen, this is a W. Everything comes over. You know, when I look back, it's funny you said that. I saw that tweet come out today, <laughs> and I'm sitting watching him, he's getting jacked up. He's going nuts. You know, so it's 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 awesome. It's an yeah. awesome feeling, and I think it, it's a testament to the work that, that, that these guys put in. I, th- I think uh, Jeff Miller and I, our director of athletic communications, are going to have to have a talk about how we just have somebody, like, on a Hilbert camera no doubt. from now on. Because there's moments, and in, in, in speaking of there's moments, what was Marietta like that last 57 seconds? No kidding, man. No kidding. And it's like, you know, it, you know, just the emotion that come over your body through a game like that, <laughs> you know. And you got to keep your cool. You know, the guys are looking at you to be, you know, to keep your cool on and coach them up, you know. And it's just like you, you, just, you just know, like, we got to do whatever we can to win this game. Yeah. You know, and you got to keep guys locked in and serious. And I, I kid you not, in a game like that, you're telling the guys all year that, play until that clock hits zero, you know, and that game was a testament that, listen, anything can happen. You don't know how it's going to go. So for you to give up with one second on the clock is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and that game was that. Game was that. that game was ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching from home, and let me tell you, uh, the highs and lows, the roller coasters that it was, but uh, uh, the, the outcome fantastic, and, and, and really the lessons they will have learned from that is fantastic. For sure. Uh, for sure. But now let's have some fun before we uh, let you go. Sure. Arm wrestling competition, you or Dean Collison? Oh, it's me all day. Oh, I like that. It's I like me all that. Day. Now, over the course of the last year, there was a lot of controversy between a Brian Schmidt, our uh, assistant men's associate head men's basketball coach, and Dean Collison in the three-point contest. Who are you taking in that? You know what? That's tough, man. Because uh, my man Smitty, I, I, you know, is is a, is a baller. Um, I will say that I am a uh, <laughs> trench mob. Um, <laughs> my, my my friend Dean Cullison is also a member of the trenches, so I got to go with him. See, I got to go with him. He's not going to know you're going to say that, and no. I will bet dollars to donuts he's going to rag on you when I ask There's that no same doubt. question because no he doesn't have faith in he you. He does not. He does not. But you know what? I, it makes me feel good that he's going to – once you tell him what I said. Yeah, I, I'll let him know. Yeah, he's going to feel bad. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> all right. If you were uh, – and I'm happy to give this to you. If you were AD for a day, what would you do? Oh, man. Jeez. I don't know, man. That's a tough question. You know, I, I tell you what, Steve, I think you're – and I and I, I, I mentioned this to just you know just talk about the recruits. I think your game day atmosphere, what you you've created for our guys has been has been unbelievable. You know, um, so whatever you're doing in that aspect, man, I think is it's awesome. I mean that atmosphere, and you want to talk about making that stage big time, and so the kids can go out there and play big time. I think has been great. So I you know. I think for me, it'd be something to add to that. Something to add to that, that game day atmosphere. No, I, I, I love you bringing it up. I, and I was not fishing for a compliment there, but I appreciate it. But it really, like, I love what our students and our student athletes are, are doing to support your, the football program and it's showing up. And that tailgate for parents and family weekend was unbelievable. And, and hopefully that energy continues. This Saturday's hard with fall break, but hopefully some students stick around. The jacket sure. backers have been fantastic, and they really set the tone. Uh, and then the, the bold and gold will be a f- another fantastic. For so sure. two two home games coming up. The last one, I, I'm a big Mike Leach fan because I just think he's so entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. And one of his great interviews was essentially who would win in a battle of the Pac-12 mascots. So in an OAC battle royale of mascots, who would win and maybe why would some others not win? Oh, man. Man. Well, being a BW alum, okay, I got to go with Stinger, okay, obviously hometown. Um, man, you know, I think you look at a couple of them, you know, the comments, they're so new, okay, I don't, you know, yeah. they don't have a chance. Um, <laughs> you know, um, 
So I, yeah, I think Sting is going to take the, the, the cake in that one. You know, um, I. I can't think of one right now that would beat him. So I love you know, it. Yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and go with Stinger on that one. I love it. Yeah. Nelly, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, it. It's, it's a good opportunity for me just, uh, you know, you do a job, and a lot of our coaches, but you guys do a job that's really thankless at times. Uh, as a director of athletics, I can't say how much I appreciate the work you do day in and day out for our student athletes, for future student athletes or current student athletes and those that played for you and with you back in the day. So. Publicly, thank you very much. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I'll try not time. to bother you too much. <laughs> no, you're good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to Nelly. Uh, just a great member, uh, a great alum, first of all, and just a great member of our coaching staff. Now, uh, man, th this is going to be entertaining. This guy still has a job uh, after pushing me down on uh, and shoving me, some might call assault during our giving day last year but uh honored to have first year or first i said first year as an assistant head coach fourth year here at bw dean collison uh here to join in us uh oversees the offensive line and and all our recruiting welcome sir how you doing uh i'm doing great yourself can you hear me yeah i can hear oh, you perfect. Yeah. okay cool yeah uh Part of me just was going to turn the floor over to you, but one of the conversations uh, Nellie and I got into uh, was the jugs competition. Any initial thoughts on that? Your video has gone viral. I was a little curious. We have not seen a Coach Parnell video yet. Yeah. Uh, honestly, in the mind of a great athlete, just another day at the office. Uh, <laughs> I have made the same claim for four years now that I am the best jump shooter in the office. That's the only thing I've claimed athletically. Tommy McIntyre, when he was here, challenged me on that. Uh, and he found out the hard way what happens when you challenge somebody who makes those claims. I am now staking my claim as best punt catcher on the football staff, even though I think I partly tore my Achilles, but it was worth it because <laughs> kids had a good time and I got to showcase my athletic ability. So... So, <laughs> that's fantastic. So this is going to be a question towards the end, but before we jump into the football, we'll go a little different, go, go a little backwards. You mentioned the uh, premier jump shooter of BW coaching staff. Yeah. Uh, who would you take in a win, be, uh, a, a shooting competition between you and Coach Schmidt with our men's basketball oh, that's, program? That's easy. He's been and, ducking me for years now. I, I told him at the golf outing he had an easy putt to make. If he makes it, he has to challenge me in a three-point shootout. But he missed it on purpose, which was crazy. So, <laughs> just uh, proof that he didn't want to want to take take your challenge. And it's the craziest thing. But he he's smart though. He knows when somebody's that confident about it and their ability. And he knows too. He's seen me shoot stuff into trash cans and whatnot. So, but uh, that's my guy. <laughs> and so, so the better question is, who did you think Nelly picked? He probably picked Schmitty. Did he? Did he? He was trench mob all the way. Was he really? He was trench mob all the way. Which is wild because <laughs> I'm not as loyal. Have you seen Nelly shoot free throws? <laughs> oh, my God. It's, uh, he, he he's was, got an underhand. He has to. <laughs> he was a proud trench mobber. He was 100% supportive of you. There, was, there wasn't even a hesitation in his voice who he would take. I just That's awesome, and I'm glad to hear that. But from my mamba mentality, I can't say the same for Nelly because I'm not a liar. He cannot shoot. <laughs> at all so i appreciate his support though right so. there you go he knows yeah. he's in it to win it so so let's talk football a little bit uh and, and one of the reasons i did want to have both of you guys on you two are a big operation behind the scenes uh and, and you with recruiting kind of overseeing that effort so just talk a little bit about what that process is uh you know where, where you find the recruit uh the 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 engagement process the the kind of the, the wedding, the, the marriage, the, the all that, how that happens for you in, in the football program? Uh, there is no process without people. And I think the thing that I've been blessed with, and I know Coach Hilbert would probably tell you the same thing since he's been here, is we have a staff that just show up at the, every day in that realm and just go to work. And I'll be the first to tell you, I'm, I'm a simpleton. I come from a hardworking, blue-collar family. My mom has owned a salon for I don't even know how many years. My dad's been a blue-collar guy, same with my brother. The only way we know how to do things is just hard work, 
and we don't make it any harder than it needs to be. And the easiest thing I've – not easiest, but the thing I've just done is just given guys the roadmap and the tools about what we want to do, their specific areas, uh, the applications and, and website publications that we use, not only Huddle but Verified and other services that have helped us find the right guys to get in here. And – it's just like like any good carpenter, you know. You could have all the two tools in the world, but it's how you use them. And I think our guys do a phenomenal job just showing up every day and, and weekly. And our GAs, too. I was a GA. I know what that job is like. And we ask our guys to do a lot. And Brenton Miller, Scotty, uh, Krieg, and Zimmy, all those guys. And if it wasn't for them, there would be no BW recruiting classes. And – it's just giving guys the direction and the roadmap we want to go and then identifying those guys that we want to bring in to help build our culture because BW football is not for everybody, and we're maybe not for every recruit either. We understand that. I think there's a certain type of kid that we like to pinpoint and bring in, and that's a guy that loves football first, and he loves the process of it and not just being given something to start. I think that's been evident with our class this year, that with the guys that we brought in. That all starts just the process of identifying it and building that relationship too. Uh, and I'll, I'll be the first to say, in recruiting, relationship I think is an overused word by people that just throw it out there to say that they do it. True. I I think most of our staff, if I'm not mistaken, I coached high school ball, as did Coach Hilbert did for a couple years. Yep. Uh, I know Coach, uh, Coach Ortz did at one time. I've been lucky to be in that realm, too, because I actually did learn how to build relationships with kids and, you know, talking, like getting to know them on the personal level as opposed to just the athletic side and being genuine behind that fact, too. And I think that's something that's sp that has spoke to a lot of kids because when they see that side of it and they see how we go about our, our way of doing things and our the way we work and the way we approach things, they want to be a part of it. So... And then on top of that, too, is from a coaching side, just having that pool of kids that you know that you can pull from uh, from the numbers perspective, but whittling that number down through the kids who are truly interested and then building on it from there. So, and it had, I mean, it's, it, it's a process now. It is. Yeah. But I think that's what makes it worthwhile, too. You get to meet new people every day. So that's, <laughs> that's something fun. Get a new but, friend every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So what, what, one of the things, you, you know, kind of is uh, somewhat of an outsider to the program, right, That but, but gets to see the inside and, and, and gets to see how you guys make the sausage, essentially. Uh, and, and Tim Budick, who we had on earlier, the, the, the president of our Brown and Gold and, and great cross-country track athlete, said, you know, he, he came and, and, and he ran for Coach T. When, when I get to see the guys and, and, and spend time with the football team and, and, and on the sidelines, you know, they're getting, an edu they're getting a great education here. They're getting a great experience. But they are playing for you. They're playing for Coach Parnell. They're, they're playing for Coach Hilvert. And, and I mentioned that video with uh, as Coach Parnell and I were talking when they got the win and, you know, the, the yeah. video of me recording Coach Hilvert. But, you know, you know talk about how you guys – there's got to be some intentionality to, to building the, that, re that kind of relationship because that's different than just a – we're going to make sure you get an education. We're going to make sure you play some football and, you know, four years we'll wash our hands of you. It's, yeah. it's a lot deeper than that. Yeah. There's got to be something you guys do on purpose. I, honestly, and I hope this doesn't sound like a cop-out answer, I really just believe we have a bunch of people on staff that love football and, and love competing in the, the spirit of competition too. And it's funny, I was thinking about this earlier too because I was – going through the mental script of man I got to say something funny in the radio show but uh, <laughs> when you look back at our team in uh, week one we weren't probably conditioned very well to answer that adversity bell and we have all of our kids are competitive I know that but I think the response to certain things wasn't where it needed to be yet and we maybe had to go through certain things to learn how to appropriately respond to it from the competition side. And as coaches, where we come in is making sure we're delivering that message, that positive message every day that if you keep swinging away, if you keep grinding through it, good things will happen. You know, in, in the O-line room, our unofficial slogan is good things happen when you play hard. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. I mean, that was evident versus Ohio Northern. That was evident versus Marietta. You know, I think specifically back to week one, how I would love to play that game again 
where you're up 14 nothing, you're inside the five, and unfortunately we turned the ball over and the wheels kind of came off from there. Fast forward three weeks later, multiple turnovers, but kept playing, kept playing hard. Two big plays later, defense time, and I, I can't shout out our defense enough, but those guys have no choice but to play hard because when the head coach is constantly watching you, that's a little bit different. So shout out Dark Side, but uh, I think that that constant message of of plugging away and, and not letting the little things hold you back from progressing forward. Don't don't make it one step forward, two steps back. Make it one step back and two steps forward. And I think our guys have finally started to learn as we approach the second half of our schedule of what it takes to win and that dynamic. Because I, I told the O-line today at the end of practice, it's fun to be a part of a great team with a bunch of talent everywhere where you know you're gonna you're gonna be the team that wins week in and week out. I've been a part of teams like that, that's fun. The teams that you love to coach though are the guys that constantly find ways to win because they're gonna be better conditioned for it by the end of the season. And that's what's made it worthwhile. And I think Coach Hilbert, I don't think that guy's ever had truly like a bad day in his life mainly it's because of the diet mountain dew <laughs> but just his energy that he gives off and it rubs it rubs off on everyone else in the office and then our kids obviously get entrenched in it and i think that's helped us as the season has got on just that po that power that positive mindset thing not to get too cheesy but you can see the the shift from where it's been from week one till now and then when you saw him celebrating that's as genuine as it gets right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. I I thought he was going to pop a coronary or something. And, but that's just – that's him, and that's who you want to play for. It means that much because if you just approached winning as some kind of laissez-faire thing, well, I don't want to be a part of that. Right. So – yeah, so after the game, you know, he goes through the line and gives me a big hug, and he hit my back so hard I had a red mark on the, my back, I think, for the next two days because he was so juiced up. Uh, you know, we got a little bit of time left. How about a, maybe a Coach Hilbert story that uh, the public doesn't see? Oh, man. Uh, let's tee one up for you here, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll tell this story, and maybe I have told it before. Uh, so for those that don't know, Coach Hilbert had a weightlifting accident uh, back in the day that unfortunately took half of his index finger with it. And when I first interviewed at BW back in February of 19, and he introduced himself to me, and I shook his hand, and like... <laughs> Normally, when you're really good friends with someone and they shake your hand and they, like, tickle your palm with their finger, you're like, what the heck? Well, he kind of did that, like, but not on purpose. And I was like, whoa, like, we're not that close, dude. Like, but I still shook his hand. And then he proceeded to tell me his first story after after I had gotten hired. He said, do you mind me asking what happened to your finger? And he goes, yeah, actually, we were vacationing uh, in the uh, Arctic. He goes, polar bear, man. And he's had a different story for it every time. <laughs> but, uh, but of course, when he told me the real story that it was from a weightlifting accident, my only response was, of course. <laughs> like, <laughs> just of course. So, but, no, I I tell you, working for that guy, it's it's been a blast. He uh, He's very forthright. He's very genuine. And I'm not saying this just to get brownie points in the office because he knows if we ever arm wrestled, he know who'd win. But, uh <laughs> Uh, he's been awesome helping me along in my development as a coach. Uh, he lets guys figure figure things out and then ask questions if need be. But he's also – he's the first guy. If you're not he, – he's done it to me before. He does it all the time. If he's not seeing what he, he needs or he thinks you could be doing something more, he'll tell you. And yeah. he'll just – he'll be forthright about it. So, it's been, a, it's been a fortunate instance and one I know I'll always be better for as I, I go. So – all right, you mentioned arm wrestling. <laughs> uh, you or Nelly in a Coach Parnell in an arm wrestling match? thousand percent me. So we do a uh, – before every Thursday practice, we have a competition of throwing footballs at the goal. But you were out there the other yeah. day. So I was throwing at the crossbar. And my man's working with some 75-year-old shoulders because he, <laughs> he can't throw. So I would probably not – 
challenge him just because I know if I do, I'll snap his arm off his body. So I don't want to do that to him. But like I said, that's my guy. You know, we ride or die. I told him for Halloween we should be uh, men in black, Agent J and Agent K. Nice. But, you know, just the heftier version. So, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So uh, late in the game, one, pl- one play left, need a touchdown to win. You're at about the three-yard line. Running the ball to Tom DeAngelis or fade route to Tom Heil? Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to meet you halfway. (laughs) Tommy Heil can jump. Tommy D, I know, can throw. I'm handing it off to Tommy D, and we're doing a jump pass to Tom (laughs) Heil to win. That's 1,000% what I would do. And then when they high-five, they can high-five their beards together because both have immaculate beards. They, they do. So they, they do. do. They, they, they put do. the time in. The yeah. time and work into those beards. <laughs> uh, I, I can appreciate that. Uh, uh, one question I did ask Coach Parnell. Uh, mascot battle royal uh, of OAC mascots. They asked Mike Leach this. and Who would win? And may, maybe give me a, some of the reasons why OAC mascots would lose. I mean, you have to take Stinger. Stinger's pretty jacked. I uh, I saw him in that Cleveland Browns mascot game. Was trucking some fools. So good for Stinger. Um, did did, you, get, did you get different video than I got of him jacking fools? Stinger jacking? Yeah, yeah. He I missed did, like, the game-winning tackle. So. Oh really? Yeah. Oh man. You, you must have missed that clip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would have to put a pioneer up there because they have. I mean, they have a weapon. Well, they have a bayonet, and weapon always helps. Uh, oh, man, you asked me quick. I have to think about this. I mean, musking them, if the right size musky, they're actually pretty deadly to smaller fish. Uh, I'd have to take your word on that. I figured you might know something about <laughs> the, the fisherman that you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be biased and take Stinger because if he got in trouble, he could fly away, but he's also yoked enough that he could hold his own in a battle. So. <laughs> I love, I, that's a smart answer. That's a smart answer. <laughs> so a, any last parting words you'd like to, to share with the masses? Yeah, no, this, this season's been uh, – it, it's been trending the right direction, and I hope everybody gets a chance to come out and watch uh, watch these young men come out, you know, work and, you know, put together a good game on Saturdays. Uh Berea being an awesome football town, I know that's never an issue. Uh, the school support's been awesome. So this weekend, especially being back at home these next two weeks is huge. So uh, if you're around Berea this this Saturday afternoon, come hang out. And then we got cigars afterwards. So if you want to come <laughs> hang out, we, we can do that too. So <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there you go. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing, last thing I want to say, and, and, and he's, you talked about Coach Hilbert mm-hmm. uh, and, and the great job he does. And, and Tim and I, ta- again, talked about his coach. The thread, again, that, that weaves itself through BW history is our great coaches. Uh, back to the Lee Tressel era. Oh, yeah. Uh, coach Fisher era. Uh, coach Taraski. Uh, you know, Coach Hilvert's right in that mold along with other, others we have here. Dean, and I, and I said this to, to Coach Parnell, you guys are in that mold as well. And, and, and I appreciate uh, – th- this is the AD talking here as we close up, but – you know, I appreciate what you do uh, for our student athletes. It's a thankless job so much, but I appreciate you. I appreciate the work you put in every day. Uh, there's never a down day when when you're working with the kids, and I, I and I respect that because uh, there's some hard. There can be some hard days, but the kids never see it, uh, and and that means a lot to what their experience ultimately is. So, thank you to all you do. I I appreciate you. Thanks so much for joining. Leadership starts at the top, man. Don't sell yourself short. Oh, sell myself short. Uh, (laughs) Face for radio and just kind of faking it till I make it as the athletic director. That's why I told Nelly I should have gone to makeup before this, but, you know. (laughs) Your beard's coming along. Yeah, my mom trimmed it this weekend, so we're we're, We're we're going the right way. All right. All right. Again, looking ahead, thank you so much, Coach Collison, Coach Parnell, and Tim Budick for joining us today. Uh, Looking ahead to this week. Women's soccer will host University Heights at 7 p.m. Uh, at Finney Stadium. And then Saturday, as Coach Collison mentioned, the Hall of Fame football game, 44th Lee Trestle Shriners Classic, kicks off at 1.30 versus those apparently really aggressive fish at from Muskingum. And women's soccer plays at 7 p.m. while our other teams are all on the road. 
Good luck to the Yellow Jackets. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully you've kept the screen off and just listened to the great audio. It's been a fantastic night. Go Jackets.